Okay, so I wanted to do a little bit more, uh, more of a detailed video about the ground balance procedure because quite a lot of V3s are being sold now. Um, so I'm hoping this will help people in regards to the ground balance because you know, some people can get confused with it. So <clears throat> we've got the ground balance course here, which is the main one. That's your primary dial right there. And then below, you've got the fine. So ground balance fine. Above, you've got the mineral control. So let's talk about the mineral control first. Okay, so if you can't dial the machine in to a specific ground that you're on using both of these, you can use the mineral control. But that's fundamentally for extreme terrain. You know, magnetite, black sand, mineralized rock, like extreme terrain. In the UK, I have no need to use this. Okay, but and this is a point that you've got to pay attention to and understand. If you're using a high frequency coil like the Silver Scout, which is 24 kilohertz, or the 18 kilohertz 10 inch coil, because they're higher frequencies, when it comes to, let's say, waterlogged ground or really, really sodden ground, yeah, there's a chance that you might not be able to dial the machine in with these two because it's high frequency. You know, and if it's soaking wet, it's going to be tricky. So what I do, I have my mineral control on number five, and I don't use it. But let's just say I've got my 18 kilohertz coil on, and I'm on ground that's quite waterlogged, and I can't quite dial it in with these two. Then I literally just put that switch, switch it up, and then that engages that dial. And then you can ground balance with that, dial in tight with these two or just that one okay so it's you're going to have to experiment with stuff like that but nine times out of ten um, in the UK you're not going to need this and most of the time you're not going to need this so let's just turn everything up a fraction so I've got the threshold you might not be able to hear it that well but I got the threshold just at an audible level right this I like to put that down to around about five or six. And then what we're gonna do. We're gonna find some ground free of metal. There we go, here. And when you lift, mind you, I've barely got anything actually. You can just hear, let me turn it up a bit. You can hear a slight fluctuation as I lift it up okay so just to dial it in a bit tighter the coarse knob just move it to the right a touch and again there we go maybe a bit more okay so now I'm getting a slight noise as I push it down so turn it to the left there you go. Now if I turn that up, there's a very, very slight noise as you lift and lower the coil. Now that's the sweet spot and that's what you want to find. Okay? So then I'll put the threshold down just a touch because I like to have it at an audible level. And then you're good to go. So it really is as simple as that, okay? Um, if you're not careful, you can overcomplicate all of this, and it's not, it's really not that complicated. Keep it in your mind. <clears throat> when you raise the coil, you turn the dial to the right. When you lower the coil, and there's a noise, you turn the dial to the left and you do it in acute little movements okay i'm hoping that yeah i've explained that in a way that you understand